Hello Black, episode 153. We told you we was going to be back. Be sure to go to our YouTube, youtube.com slash Pod. Be sure to subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Uh, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Pod. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on our SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcast at. Uh, we should be there, you feel me? And if we ain't there, just uh, go to our Patreon and tell us, you know? So appreciate all the support, all the love as always. You know, we're going to keep... Uh, building this revolutionary content and we're going to keep building people's programs. You know what I'm saying? So uh, appreciate y'all supporting, listening. We got a good, another good episode, another timely episode uh, as it pertains to Oakland mm-hmm. and, you know, this uh, idea of quote unquote crime <laughs> that is being pushed by the far right. Right. Um, these, these fascist understandings of what's happening. And you know, we're going to try and give you all some uh, good insight on what's really going on and give you all some historical understanding uh, to the conditions. Cause I know we all want, collectively want, you know, a better Oakland, a better a reality for, for the people of Oakland. Hey, and I, I would say, you know, not just necessarily about crime, but I, I think like all just the current state of Oakland in general. Yeah. Uh, and I would advise people go check out uh, episode 145. I think this, that episode and this in tandem can help, uh, Y'all see, like, I guess, like our full analysis on what's going on, um, right? Uh, the current state of Oakland uh, continues to be at the center of pop culture and, and nationwide politics uh, because of the, ma- <clears throat> excuse me, because of the material conditions uh, that are brought forth by the backwards system of capitalism and, you know, the uh, exploitative conditions that it creates. And I know I was talking to you yesterday, like, you know, the town has been the focal point of social media discussions anytime like viral videos from that uh fed page bay area state of mind or oakland state of mind uh goes viral or uh why these snitch pages really (laughs) i was telling you i can't remember what the person's name was i should have looked it up beforehand but there was another video where you had this this white woman this white racist fascist who was on on a news show saying like i think her exact words like oakland's dead you know uh and then you know most recently uh the food critic Keith Lee uh, had to cut his trip short for a plethora of reasons, but one of them being, you know, he was just uh, very distraught. And I would say, like, rightfully so, we're seeing some of the conditions of the, you know, like folks sleeping on the street, businesses shut down. Cars burn, people yeah. in tents. You know, shit that we see every day for real. Um, and so, like, these type of, uh, I only mention Keith Lee, right? This isn't a criticism of bro or like, we really ain't going to talk about him too at, at all past this, right? But just his situation was, uh, the most recent catalyst for yeah. the town being in conversations once again, being in the limelight in some sense, you know, but for people, you know, essentially, for, yeah, for for what's going on. Uh, but I do want to say, you know, I'm gonna send this. I did invite bro to uh, the our grocery program and our uh, breakfast program. Breakfast program. You know, I had DM them, then I reached out to to Guap, uh, who has been an avid supporter of people's programs, whether it's the cleat check in 2020, whether it's uh, him sponsoring a program, I want to say in 2021, whether it was uh, last year, 2020, 2022, 2023, with him supporting Tales of the Town. Uh, So Guap has always been, uh, Guap Dad 4000, so I'm referring to, he has always been a supporter of people's programs. And even just last month, the holiday shit that he did at at Crybaby. Um, So, you know, I had reached out to him because I know they they got a little relationship, but hey, you should tell bro, get involved. You know, Guap has been to a few of our programs, but Apparently, you know, he had an allergic reaction to something, and I think the food was just nasty to him, too, so he probably got up out of here. Uh, but, yeah, we want to continue to extend the invite to Keith Lee to come get involved in people's programs. Straight I know this whole up, thing yeah. is uh, building community through food, and that's what that. as well. Food and groceries. Yeah. And healthcare and farming. Uh, <laughs> Political education. We're building. Yeah, and so bro did seem genuinely concerned, and I think through that, it was some more, like, genuine conversations around mm. what's going on in Oakland. Uh and so we wanted to just provide that analysis, right? Yeah. Um, and I think there is, should be concern, right? When you have just this past year and remind you, uh, these numbers come from OPD and they be lying, but let's just consider them as the truth. See story, what the right? enemy is saying. Uh, we had 3,600 cases of robbery, uh, 14,000 stolen cars and 118 homicides. Um, and you partner those with the stats of like thousands of people sleeping on the streets and in shelters every night, I would definitely say that's like cause for concern. 
Uh, you know, I don't think anyone can disagree with that. I think where the contradiction arises for like you and I uh, is when people talk about the causalities of these conditions, they tend to miss the mark. Uh, and as a result, they tend to miss the mark with the solution. So what me and you are going to try to do in the, briefly is provide some analysis so that uh, provide some analysis on the causalities, provide some solutions through that we've seen, right, uh, historically and through our own efforts with people's programs so that we can do what uh, Yaki says, right, uh, not hit the shadow, but actually hit the body. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, first it would do all our listeners some goods if we start to name the causalities of these conditions. Number one, we already said it. Uh, it's what we see in Oakland today is the manifestation of uh, capitalism in its neoliberal form in the 21st century, right? We talked about neoliberalism in the past, in the previous episode where you have uh, the privatization of all sectors of society, right? The economy, um, which is electricity, uh, the schools, right? You see all these charter schools in Oakland, and some could even argue that OPD is a private police force, right? Mm -hmm. But I digress. <laughs> you feel me? But, <laughs> but I digress. But, uh, you know, we talk about uh, neoliberalism, right? Uh, we got to give our people words, you know, like define this thing, right? Yeah. We, we live in a capitalist society, and the capitalist society that we live in is in this neoliberal or neocolonial form. Neoliberalism being, you know, the practice and the economic system that pushes the privatization of all sectors of society, like we just named, right? Like a PG&E, like the charter schools, like a OPD, like the healthcare, right? That's a privatization, but also still pushes like civil and human rights under One the Oakland guise of together. capitalism. It was just insane, right? You know what I'm saying? That's what you get. We, so uh, we call that. Let's just bring love here. You know, we need more love. Like that's the words that they use while pulling the trigger and holding the gun at the people and keeping people away from grocery stores and rising the cost of everything from rent, from food, like. from water to gas to getting new tires because they don't invest in the streets, but they're gonna build bike lanes uh, <laughs> that cater to a European mm -hmm. crowd that likes to ride bikes, even though all no Africans about building been on scraper bikes all the time, riding bikes through the town, but they want to do it only when these new people come in under the guise of quote unquote uh equity and climate change and environmentalism but we got to be real mm -hmm. <laughs> we got to be real you know uh huey p newton talked about the uh technocratic state that is being developed in the bay area in oakland you feel me we've mm -hmm. seen uh the bay area essentially be a hub for these tech companies these tech companies that are using technology and creating technology for wars and then rising up the cost of living the cost of rent, the cost of survival uh, in Oakland, uh, in the greater Bay Area to where uh, people are sleeping on the streets in mass. You know, you talk about uh, black people were once uh, nearly 50 percent of the population in Oakland. And now they say around 21 percent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's probably it's probably even less than that. Yeah. Right. So, again, we got to understand these conditions, you know, what I'm saying of uh, this town that has been such a small town. Right. Uh, but the people here are being exploited at a rate that I think is unimaginable <laughs> in some ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a very small, imagine it's such a small town at, in the heart of this uh, technological society. You feel, you feel me where uh, people is being kicked out onto the streets. People is being over-policed, hyper-policed, mm -hmm. beat by the police, shot by the police, killed by the police. Then mm -hmm. you have a, a quote-unquote people of color engaging in the city government. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got a, a mayor like Shang Tao who says she was about abolish the police, who says she was about the community. But Shang Tao is talking about I'm in solidarity with the Oakland Pig Department. She's in solidarity with the uh, <laughs> corporate killers. You feel me? Mm -hmm. uh, of Oakland police. You know what I'm saying? You have people saying abolish the police and they're going to fix West, West, West Oakland and uh, create housing for all. But then doing what for West Oakland? Doing what for the people? Yep. You know, so we got to understand this uh, a neoliberal strategy of integrating, <laughs> quote unquote, colonized people into the infrastructure of the city of Oakland government, but still doing the job uh, for the Democrats, doing the job for neoliberalism, doing the job for, for capitalism. Hey. And that's what's happening right now. You feel me? Where millions upon millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars is going to the police, but they ain't doing nothing. They ain't solving nothing. You feel me? They ain't providing resources, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if that OPD budget was actually being truly invested in the uh, in the people, mm -hmm. in the infrastructure for, for people, education, free housing, free education, uh, food programs, healthcare programs, how fundamentally different Oakland would be. But the reality is 
uh, the oppressed always get blamed for being oppressed. Mm -hmm. The oppressed always get blamed for doing things that oppressed people do, but we ain't actually dealing with the foundation of the problem. We ain't dealing with the foundation of this Euro American capitalist structure uh, that rakes in mass profit, mass profit, profit for Euro Americans while colonized people are left fighting for crumbs. Colonized people is left fighting each other. And that we have to take a personal responsibility as people who do want change, as people who do understand the conditions and encourage people for change, for positive uh, revolutionary development uh, to where we're actually, you know what I'm saying, uh, attacking uh, the spider. <laughs> you feel me? Who's developed this web of oppression. Rather, we is just attacking ourselves and, and we ain't taking the web out in, in, in its entirety. We ain't taking out the 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 center of the exploit of the exploitation, you know, so it's important for us to ground ourselves in the reality of the situation. If we is truly invested in transforming the condition of our neighborhoods, transforming the condition of the people uh, to where all people have the right to food, housing, water, education, you know, fit for human beings. I think we harp so much on making sure people have a proper understanding and proper definition and proper analysis, because if you aren't able to define your world, how are you going to be able to change it? Right. And we can see that there has been a clear disconnect between how we've come to how the masses of people, let's just say in Oakland, have come to understand how we arrived at this point versus yeah. how we've actually gotten here. Right. And so until we can actually, I think uh, Yaki says in his book, Meditations on Wretched of the Earth, he says, you know, we should study everything we can about uh, class struggle. You know, I would urge our listeners to study everything they can on capitalism, right? Like understand how this immoral system can only breed an immoral reality, can only breed an immoral people, right? You just mentioned uh, the oppressed always get blamed for being for being oppressed, right? So like, why wouldn't this city look the way that it does? Why wouldn't people rob, steal, kill when they are bred of an immoral system of capitalism that says, yo, y'all can do all this work, uh, and not reap the benefits of that work mm. that says that we can take resources from wherever we want and then subject the people. This nation was built on subjecting uh, indigenous people, subjecting Africans to the way of life of Europeans. That's mm. that's that's the same economic economic system that this country was founded on is the same economic system that governs it today. Houselessness, burnt up cars, robberies. This is just the manifestation of uh pan-europeanism of the euro-american ideology and practice in the 21st century that's all it is the same ideology mm -hmm. and morale that allowed them to kill the indigenous people put them on missions and then put us on slave ships and bring us here that's what makes uh health not free that's what makes thousands of people sleep on the streets although there are thousands of uh, vacant <laughs> units in oakland that's what makes uh opd have a 700 mm -hmm. million dollar budget for 2023 to 2025 and youth in, in parks and recs and youth development only has uh 40 million you have an $8 million going to a rapid housing fund. What if we just took just $100 million from the police? Like just $100 million. Head Royce, which is an affluent school in the Oakland Hills, of, of uh, in, in, yeah, the Oakland Hills, alone, just last year alone, they spent $40 million on their school. Just last year alone. In one year, they spent $40 million on their students. We're we talking about spending $8 million on, an entire, on, the, on the entire youth of Oakland. And it's mostly black and brown kids who come up through the youth and park and recs uh, shit in Oakland. Right? I used to go to Center on 9-8, right? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's again, uh, until we actually form an analysis mm -hmm. on how this thing, this economic, social, economic, and political system we live in uh, creates all elements of our reality, we'll continue mm -hmm. to miss the head. And one of the things that has coming up based off the some of these videos, like what is the city, what is the city doing? The city is involved. So I hate to break it to you. They're on it. They're in on this thing. The city is the one that decided the $8 million goes to the rapid housing fund. $40 million goes to Parks and Recs. $700 million goes to the pigs. The city decided that. Mm -hmm. Our elected officials. You know, like, and so we can say that the people decided that. The people who voted, you decided that, right? We, we, we put them in charge. We allow it to happen by not transforming the condition. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I say, right, we have to have that personal responsibility, right? Because a lot of times... Because of the way the society has indoctrinated us to believing in it, what we do, the first thing that we do is we mimic our oppressors, mm -hmm. right? You're talking about robbing, stealing, and killing. What do our oppressors do? At the highest, at the biggest height of it all, they rob, they steal, and kill, right? 
at a level that the oppressed do not do, obviously, mm-hmm. right? But in many ways, we mimic that uh, through our conditions, right? So when you talk about ideology, right, and why we harp so much on being being able to identify our conditions and having a proper understanding is because we understand that thought predates action. You feel me? We have a colonial mentality, which is why we're treating each other shit in a terrible way. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's why we have to transform from a colonial mentality to a revolutionary mentality where we see and identify the problems and then be able to take a responsibility for the problems. Then once we take that responsibility, then it's incumbent upon us to make the change that we want to see in the streets. So, okay, now I know better. So what am I going to do? I'm going to work to do better and transform the conditions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that we have Again, that proper ideology and why we stress, you know, what I'm saying this essentially a lot of times what we talk about is like having that. What does that revolution look like to rid that colonial mentality and to develop a, a revolutionary mentality that is uh, guided by communalism, that is guided by egalitarianism, that is guided by uh, loving yourself and loving your brother and loving your sister and wanting to see uh, the liberation of the human family. You know, like mm-hmm. we really have to get and to develop a certain ethos a certain code, you know what I'm saying? If we talk about Pac and Thug Life, you feel me? He was developing a certain ethos, a certain culture, and a certain code uh, between Crips and Bloods. You know what I'm saying? So that there's a <laughs> a, a standard operating procedure of how you conduct your business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got to get back to the roots of that and, and create certain codes in the community to where there's ways that we handle things. You know, where that becomes a part of a revolutionary culture that is being developed that is combating the ways that European, Euro-American colonization, settler colonialism and imperialism has indoctrinated us into becoming human beings, not even human beings, to becoming human beings who are then essentially cattled like cows <laughs> in these European cowboys come up <laughs> and put us in a certain direction and say, go over here, mm-hmm. now go over there, now go do this, now go do that, now go work here. Now give us all your profits. Now you ain't done that. Oh, now we coming for you here. You went against the code. Now you're getting locked up here. Now you're working, making cents on the dollar. So it's important for us to engage in uh, a personal transformation. If we don't engage in that personal transformation, take personal responsibility, how are we going to engage in some type of social transformation of our society, which we all want to see happen, Mm -hmm. you know? I don't know. I mean, with it being an election year, I do know. <laughs> I, I think we should. Uh, we talked about the causes, right? Yeah. Uh, inhumane ideology, inhumane economic system, uh, bad budgets, right? We talked about the problems. Now, I think we should talk about solutions. And with it being an election year, we should approach this as if you was on your campaign. <laughs> so, what do you propose as the solutions to addressing <sighs> some of the inequality, the inequities, and in inhumane manifestations of? capitalism well you see here my dear brother <laughs> you gotta vote you gotta pull, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and vote nah but uh realistically we have to again it's kind of repeating some of the points that we had earlier we have to have an understanding of self an understanding of history uh to be able to understand who's for us and who's against us mm-hmm. what is for us and what is against us right so if we understand what is for us it's the people right it's the masses of people Uh, developing revolutionary consciousness to be able to transform their abilities and to be able to essentially become our own liberators to where we have full political, social, uh, economic, uh, and military control of our own livelihoods and of our own communities. Uh, We understand right now that we don't have control of our own communities. Uh, We're in an election year, a presidential election year, where we're essentially having a vote for two evils, either Joe Biden or Donald Trump, right? Poison is poison and evil is evil. The decision is already being made uh, by the powers that be. We don't even have any type of voice, any type of uh, choice uh, to be able to choose who becomes the so-called commander in chief, uh, the so-called president of the uh, United Snakes of America. We have no uh, quote unquote democratic participation in choosing who becomes the next leader. It's a fact. So the question then arises is how do we have daily participation because that's what politics is is a daily participation uh in a society that transforms 
either it can either transform or deform your way of life. Mm -hmm. You know, for us as revolutionaries, as uh, revolutionary humanists, as people who believe in egalitarianism, we want the people to become in control of their own destiny. We want people to be able to control and seize their own destiny, which means that we have to control the land. We have to free the land and free the resources from this hyper exploitation of this technocratic state that we is in. Uh, of this uh, uh, state that is taking all the resources, all the natural resources and exploiting us. You feel me? To where we're having uh, people are having to work in this gig economy and you feel me work hours upon hours uh, in this new factory that's on your app to where you sign up and now you're become a gig economy worker. You feel me? While uh, you feel me, the corporate elites is just making the mass profits. So ultimately we have to decide a, if we, transform city council what does that what does that mean you know at least in the basics of oakland i'd say for me i always go back to when bobby seal was running for mayor right bobby seal did not get elected that was at the height essentially the height of the black panther party being in oakland right mm -hmm. uh, of being able to develop black po political power quote unquote through the electoral realm that failed that was you feel me that was decades ago so if that failed then why do we think that joining this system that is committing genocide against black brown and indigenous people will be the vehicle for social change instead we got to understand that the vehicle for social change must be the people must be the masses of uh, people living in oakland deciding how our day-to-day -day reality is going to be governed the system of settler colonialism and their bourgeoisie institutions will never be for the people. It was never designed for be, to be for the people. Mm -hmm. We're living under a government of European American slave holding white men who had the teeth of enslaved Africans in their mouth who are dictating the day to day agenda of this country. Still hundreds of years, you know, over 100 plus years later, mm -hmm. still dictating it. Right. So if, that is the foundation of our oppression than the people and a mass movement of people, uh, revolutionary humanists deciding that it is our human right to be free. We must be in our communities developing actual autonomy, actual infrastructure to where we say we can liberate this block in West Oakland here. Everybody is fed. There's childcare, there's groceries. You feel me? Uh, water's being, you feel me? There's education. Right. Where we can free that block. Then we say, OK, now we free this block in North Oakland. Now these two blocks is uh, cooperating with each other. You feel me? We might have a bigger farm here and they might have aquaponics over there. We giving them more uh, lettuce. They giving us more shrimp. <laughs> they giving us more salmon. We giving them more chickens. And we have that spirit of cooperation uh, because we want for our brother what we want for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want for our fellow human being what we want for another human being. Right. Then we take that liberated zone theory of freeing land here, freeing land there. Um, and then being able to protect our communities, you feel me, where we develop that revolutionary code, you know, and we begin freeing other other neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying? And then it becomes this natural positive force uh, to where other neighborhoods are like, hey, how do we get a part of this? Yeah. You know, so it's a, uh, and ain't an easy solution. It's going to require hard work mm -hmm. and dedication, but all of it's feasible if we is truly committed to uh, seeing the best of humanity. So as someone, you know, for you being here your whole life and having uh, generations of family, you know, here in Oakland, um, yeah, what does it mean for you to keep keep the faith, you know, despite seeing this condition of Oakland and having this historical understanding of the history of Oakland? I mean, I, when we do like the Tales of the Town screening, you you talk about it a lot in terms of uh, when one understand history. Um, and what people have gone through, uh, let's say like Africans have gone through historically, like how could we be like jaded or or uh, become pessimistic around our conditions, right? It starts to feel like what you say is like a speck of sand, you know? Uh, and so when I pair that with the fact that like, I just have a faith in humanity, thus I have faith in Oakland, um, you know, I, I really don't know where all this pessimism came from, you know? Maybe it's what happens when a people have been subjected to these conditions for too long, right? Um, but statistically speaking, like we have seen worse, right? Um, in 2012, we had 4,338 robberies and 127 homicides. 
in 2006, we had 145 homicides. And at that time, you know, I was on a bus in BART to back and forth from shit damn near deep East Oakland to Berkeley for school every day, walk around, going to functions, all this shit. And I never felt scared when I was outside. And I don't remember like my family being scared, you know, like this. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Like we've seen worse, right? But I think like that kind of fear and helplessness uh, is what happens when the people forget who they are. And that's why we talk about history being so important, right? Like black people have clearly forgotten that uh, when we wanted to see a change in Oakland, we've organized and fought to see that change, right? Uh, we ain't wait on the city and we for damn sure ain't wait on the pigs, right? Uh, and I think what I hope we can do with people pro with people's programs is start to help lend to like that spirit of self-determination back, you know, really embody what Jaleel says in, in terms of us being our own liberators. Uh, right. When black kids, we talked about the breakfast program on the previous episode, right? But when black kids were starving, going to school starving, and uh that impacting their ability to learn, what did the Black Panthers do? They fed them. When kids were getting ran over at busy intersections, what did the Black Panthers do? They put up stoplights. When uh the Black Panthers realized that the groceries being provided via the welfare programs were not enough to satiate the diets of the communities. What did they do? They organized free breakfast programs. Uh, this is what we have to get back to, right? Um, but it ain't just enough to have a dozen programs. It's, it's, it ain't just enough to have these programs because there are a dozen of them, right? In Oakland, dozen hot meal programs, dozen grocery programs, right? Uh, we need the correct analysis and ideology, right? And so, um, just by seeing the way that our organization, just by seeing the way that you and I have grown as individuals, uh, seeing the way that our organization has grown as a collective and the way that the members of this collective and volunteers of this collective have grown, how could I not have, like, I've seen Thanks. change happen every day. You feel me? Like, I've seen change happen every day. How could I not and have- And you've seen yourself being a part of it and you've seen yourself change. Come on. So how could I not have faith, right? Uh, but I, I think when you have faith mixed with a real scientific strategy and analysis, then this is where we can get to what you're talking about, having like a liberated uh, community and a community that's uh, steeped in the respect for human life and that respect being embedded in the institutions and organizations that govern our community, right? Uh, and so, yeah, just having that faith in our, we got to just do a, be a much better job of reorienting and uh, re-educating our people. Uh, because when people are still relying on a city that has told you year in and year out, first comes the police, then comes everything else. Mm. It's time for us to take heed to what they, the age old saying, when somebody shows you who you are, who they are the first time, believe them. Mm. They've shown us over and over, the city has, where their allegiance lies. Uh, what? Since the, I mean, that's just yeah, you crazy. Me, like, Been doing it since the town was found, quote unquote, founded by yeah. the settlers. You know? And so I, I think uh, we just, you know what I'm always saying, it's the organization's fault. It's anybody who claims to mm. have an understanding of the dialogue. Whoever who who, cl who claims to have an understanding of materiality, it's the personal responsibility that we got to take. You know, and so I say, like, if we want to see some change, you know, we got to continue to build the organization, to organize and struggle. My shit is frozen, but hopefully, there's like some um, dope little graphics that Jacqueline can put over this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I would say. And so I just encourage people to not lose the faith. If you are actually devoted, start thinking about how you can get involved. Like, get offline tweeting. And complaining all day get off instagram get off bay area state of mind get off oakland state of mind and get into the streets and do something <laughs> like put your state of mind in the streets and, and the i'm people. gonna be right there with you at people's programs you know if you you know so I, hey. that's that's what i propose sign up come volunteer come build with us peoplesprograms.com you feel me yeah hey, support the people building building these programs for the people and you know there ain't a organization like people's programs in your old cow hit us up you feel me? And we'll give you any advice that we have and creating it. Yeah. The manual analysis, y'all. The manual is also we are our own liberators by Jalil Muntakim. He wrote it all down for us. Please, you feel me? And then we got to apply that science <laughs> to our reality day in and day out. You know what I'm saying? Read Class Struggle in Africa by Kwame Nkrumah too. If you want to just get like a little basic understanding of capitalism and some of the morals and values and the systemic processes, like just read that. We're going to link to those. So episode 153, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Patreon. Please, please, please go support our Patreon. You know, can we hold a dollar? <laughs>
Can we hold five dollars real quick? Support the podcast, support the production of this podcast. You know, it costs money to do this. So uh please support us, patreon.com slash hellblackpod for the people, for your land.